fall is in full swing. Have you noticed the stores are starting to fill up with all the holiday decorations? Which means you just might be starting to feel the familiar pressures of the holidays creeping in. Perhaps there's a whisper of, your gathering needs to be picture perfect, Instagram worthy, (laughs) or how are you going to fit all of it in? Or you just had to make sure you outdo last year's feast. Whichever one it might be, just take a deep breath. I'm glad you're here because this episode is your holiday hosting lifeline. We brought back Mara, our joyful hostess, to help us remember back to when hosting was fun, to remind us this is about connection, not perfection. We jump right into the important things, like how do you keep your sanity while hosting for the holidays? And is it possible to create meaningful gatherings without burning out? And the million dollar question, can you actually enjoy your own party? And if so, how? (laughs) Even talk about the sticky stuff. Mindful hosting that utilizes all of our resources, including human ones, other people, (laughs) about how we can set boundaries that preserve our joy and how we can prioritize and decide what's important which can help us ditch some of that pressure. Whether you're a seasoned host feeling burned out from doing this again and again and again, like a broken record, or you're a newbie who's just a little nervous or terrified about hosting your first holiday gathering. This episode is packed with practical tips and soulful insights to bring the magic and joy back to hosting. Let's transform your holiday hosting from a source of stress to a wellspring of joy. That's the reason we're doing it, right? Let's dig and discover how to create gatherings to not only wow your guests, but also nurture your soul. Stick around to the end to learn about Mara's holiday challenge and how it can help ease your stress, a fabulous beverage recipe, and a tool that might help you figure out what you actually want to do to host this holiday. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to The Grit Show, where our focus is growth on purpose. I'm your host, Shauna Rodriguez, and I'm honored to be part of this community as we journey together with our grit intact to learn more about how to thrive and how to get the most out of life. It means a lot that you are here today. As you listen, I encourage you to think of who may appreciate the tidbits of knowledge we are sharing and to take a moment to pass this along to them. Everyone appreciates a friend that thinks of them. And these conversations are meant to be shared and to spark even more connections. I am thrilled about our conversation today. We have brought back the joyful hostess, Mara Derricks, because you guys love her. We've had her on before and then we replayed her episode because it was so good. So as we get ready for the holidays, she is our expert. She grew up in a boisterous family and she definitely has taken all of the skills she's learned and applied it to having entertaining with ease is how I like to think about it. Bringing the joy back to the holidays, which we all need. So we are going to have a great conversation today as we all are getting into the season and thinking about how we're going to entertain. We are welcoming. Thank you so much for being here, Mara, to have this conversation with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be back. I had such a great time the last time, Shauna. Like I'm pumped. I love it. I love it. I love it. So as we are starting to think and formulate like, Okay, the holidays are coming. We want to have joy for this. We want to like enjoy this. Like, what are your first thoughts for somebody who is anxious about the thought of entertaining? We'll start with family. Like, somebody just even entertain family. They're anxious about it. Like, what are your first thoughts about the mindset they need to have as they're starting to think of how they want to bring family together for the holidays? I think probably the first thing that comes to mind for me is Otto here at Joyful Hostess, and that. Hosting is less perfection, more connection. Because I think during the holidays, it's really easy to get caught up in wanting to do like all the things, right? Like my table has to look Pinterest worthy and I have to have chef level skills to create like this meal. And it doesn't actually have to be like that. It really is. The holidays are about getting together with loved ones and we can simplify it, right? We can simplify, we can take shortcuts, give yourself permission to do that. And I think people will find it more freeing when they're hosting, knowing that it doesn't have to be perfect because there's no such thing. 
There is no such thing. And being able to narrow your focus instead of trying to do all the things. In this day and age, when we live, like we get to see the best of everyone's everything on Pinterest, on Instagram, on our Facebook feed. So we see and we are like, oh, I want to do this outfit for me. And I want to do this dish for this. And I want to do this design for that. And so you see the 15 to 20 things you want to do instead of like, just having one or two things to focus on and you get overwhelmed. Exactly. Yes. And those are the times when you don't actually even get ready for your party because you're so busy doing all the other things. (laughs) All the other things that actually don't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Those are the things that don't matter. And I don't remember if last time we chatted about this, but like when it comes to preparing for the holidays, I think sometimes people go a little cuckoo bananas. Like they're cleaning their laundry room and now I got to clean on top of the cupboards and I got to do a deep clean... Guys, like your guests are not looking in those areas. So why are you making yourself crazy adding that to the list of an already busy season? Yes. So we can simplify. Let's like pair back and focus on, that's one of the tips I would say when you're getting your home ready for the holidays, just focus on the area where your guests will be. Like that will make your life so much easier. Don't worry about the kids' playrooms or the kids' rooms or your closets. Like nobody's going in there. Nobody's going in there. Yes. Closets, bottom of the list, the bathroom (laughs) upstairs, back behind the corner thing that no one's going to be in does not need to have those things done. Definitely. And you recently had, so if you will get the information for Mara on Instagram and on her YouTube channel, especially are very helpful, but I love, I follow her on Instagram and it brings me joy every time I see her stuff on Instagram. But like you recently had like the top tips for the last minute things you do before people come over. And I love it because you actually think that I haven't thought of. So (laughs) so what are some of those like last minute tips that you recommend that are the most important things? So lighting your candles, if you're going to light candles, think about that 30 minutes before guests come, because I feel like it's welcoming people sometimes over often overlook kind of like scent, how welcoming that is. That's why big retailers like use scent to entice us having a playlist or some kind of music going helps to avoid awkward silences. So get some music going, make time to get yourself ready. People make time to get yourself ready. So you're not frantically trying to finish your hair and people are like knocking on the door. Nobody likes feeling that grip of panic. when You're not ready. Yeah. So make time to get yourself ready and make sure the toilet paper is stocked up in the bathroom. I would say that too. was I never would have thought about stocking the toilet paper. I think that I'm so worried about like the other things I never would think about stocking toilet paper. But who wants to be running around the middle of the party trying to find toilet paper to possibly find out you don't have any? Like, that's, that's when somebody's going to the store in the middle of the party is to get toilet paper is very important. So I love that was the, like, I wouldn't think of like, that is a brilliant thing to make sure that you have that cover because you have the extra. Yeah. Especially because we have like a guest bath downstairs that I don't use often and go into. And so I might not even notice (laughs) that you don't. And then it avoids that whole awkward conversation with a guest that's like, "Uh, do you have any toilet paper? And now you're like scrambling in the middle of your party trying to find where you've got the toilet paper stashed. And hopefully you have more. (laughs) Or somebody telling a story like four years later at a party going like, I was at this party and I was in the bathroom and there was no toilet paper. So I'm like shaking, trying to drip. (laughs) trying to figure out how to take care. And you're like, oh, wait, was that my party? Because I I remember somebody coming and telling me because they looked before they went. And yeah, so somebody might have been there without any. So yes, you don't want to hear that story later and wonder if it was your party. (laughs) No. Good thing to think about in advance. Yeah. And I would say too, like having your appetizers or your drink station, like whatever, have that ready ahead of time too. So that at least if you're busy doing other things, then guests can kind of keep themselves busy by nibbling on some food or fixing themselves a drink. It just kind of helps take the pressure off you if you haven't quite got everything out and ready to go. I like that. And you have a place to just direct them to. And I definitely, because I tend to over plan. I've gotten better over the years about not over planning, but I'm ambitious. And I'm like, we're going to have this and this and this and this and this. And the last two, this is are not needed. And I've gotten better about saying like, you know what? I'm not going to put out that last appetizer or that last dish because it's more important that I go get ready and enjoying this instead of doing those extra two or three things. And so ultimately I should plan less, 
But if you're like me and you can't help it, (laughs) then it's okay to just take a breath and say like, no one's going to know that we didn't do the extra cinnamon on the baked brie. Like, you know what I mean? Like we can let go of some little touches at the last minute so that we can enjoy Enjoy ourselves. Yes. Yes. But knowing things like the music helps fill the awkward silences, knowing that toilet paper is not something we want to get interrupted with. Like knowing those things is a helpful way of doing things to make it a little bit more like smooth and easy other points during the the gathering, right? Right. Yes, definitely, definitely appreciate that. So tell us about a party that you put on in the last year that you feel was really successful and went really well. Well, being that we're in Canada, we literally just finished hosting Thanksgiving. That's where we do our Thanksgiving in October. So we just had both my side and my husband's side over here for Thanksgiving, right? Full on like turkey, mashed potatoes, like that whole thing. And it went really well because one of the things that I am adamant about is that make it easy for yourself. So what we said was everybody come, we will worry. We're going to take care of turkey, mashed potatoes, apple pie, everything else. If you guys can bring stuff. So people brought sides and the Mm -hmm. key is like already cooked. Like, I don't want you like (laughs) stay out of my oven. (laughs) Like already ready to go. Yes. (laughs) And everybody brought stuff. So like, like the salads and the corn and more desserts and whatever. So it was actually kind of really easy for us to host because everybody contributed. And then what's really nice about that is that family and guests, when you're doing something like that, for the most part, appreciate being able to contribute. Yes. There's not many people that are like, oh, dang, I got to bring something. I mean, even if you're bringing a bottle of wine, like you don't have to make something. You can just bring something and contribute. So that's also one of the kind of the hosting things, making it easy by asking for help or outsourcing, right? You also don't have to make everything from scratch. So if we wanted to, I mean, my husband's learned how to make pie dough, which is incredible. So he wanted to make the pie from scratch, but you could buy it. Just buy it. You don't have to like make it. You can buy it, make it easy. Yes. And I really think that there's like this piece of you having like the signature thing you make so you can focus and do it well, and then buying the other things. So like if I make amazing rolls, I'll make the amazing rolls and everyone gets up with the rolls. But if I don't, I can go, we have the Costco rolls here. They only have at the holidays. I'll go buy the Costco rolls. Easy, simple, delicious. I know they're good. <laughs> go yeah. buy the Costco rolls and then I'll make the dessert from scratch that I know that everyone will be talking about and enjoying later. And so to, to like pick and choose the things that you're going to make from scratch and put the love into because you stop putting the love and care into it and you get it done. And I've noticed that when I'm cooking for a lot of people under stress and doing a ton of things like they all turn out. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, You're like, can you taste the resentment in this? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Resentment just adds like a tang you don't want to have in your food. No, no. (laughs) Yeah. So make one thing with a love and enjoy it and savor making it and then have the other things be fast and easy or grab it pre-made somewhere easy, affordable, or just have somebody else bring it. Bring it. Yeah. Yes. And what are your thoughts on like how specific to get on what other people bring for your events? Well, in this case, you know, we had like the text chain going. So it was kind of really easy for people to be like, okay, I'm bringing the corn and I'm bringing cornbread and I'm bringing salad. So that was like kind of nice. I would say as the host too, to have some ideas ready, because inevitably there'll be somebody being like, I don't know, what do you want me to bring? Yes. So you have to kind of know to fill in the gaps, but yeah, I don't get overly specific unless somebody says, Oh, I'm going to bring this. And I already know somebody else is bringing the salad. So we don't need two salads. Yes. I have some alternate ideas. Yeah. Yes. I had somebody get very specific on what, like they literally told me to bring X, Y, Z for it is like, told me what dessert to bring. And it made me very sad because I am amazing at desserts. And I have like five signature desserts that I'm amazing at. And they told me to bring this specific thing. And and it might've been that like somebody was coming and like, that is like what they wanted, but it's almost setting me up, up for failure because like, I'm sure I didn't make it like their mom made it. Like, you know? yeah. And so, but I had to go find recipes and make this out of season dish. Okay. I'm just gonna say it. They told me to bring peach 
cobbler to a Thanksgiving meal. And again, peach is not in season. Cobbler, not something that I frequently make, or if I do is blackberry cobbler is actually the cobbler yeah. that I make. And so like, it's one of those type of things that like, and I make it in season. I don't make it for Thanksgiving. So it's one of these things that I like had a really hard, like I was driving three and a half hours to go to this on Thanksgiving day. So it was going to be cold when I got, you know what I mean? I'm like, why am I? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I don't really get too specific, right? Like if you tell yes. me you're bringing me a salad, I'm like, cool. Like whatever salad you bring, I don't <laughs> whatever, care. Whatever, yes. You decide. <laughs> Is it Caesar salad? Is it Greek salad? Is it a fall salad with nuts? I don't care. You're bringing salad. Yes. Cool. That's one less thing I have to do. So I'm not overly concerned about the specifics. Yeah. Yes. And so for people listening, like I appreciate the flexibility, like tell me dessert because you need dessert and I need like those guardrails. And if you want to be a little more thing, tell me pie, like, you know, whatever else, but give me some room to like figure out like what kind of pie I'm good at making, what's in season that I can grab, like it might be. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of, because when I was told like that specific, I was like, like, I don't have any of those ingredients. I had to go buy frozen peaches because I wasn't going to do candy. You know what I mean? So I had to like, it was those type of things where I was all excited about like the signature desserts I normally make for Thanksgiving or for other things. And was kind of sad that I was like, that's harder to make with love. <laughs> yeah. And I think from the host perspective too, just make it easy and let go a little bit. Like you don't actually need to control what cobbler or dessert people are bringing. You really don't. <laughs> you may think you do, but you actually don't. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that, yes. And I embraced opportunity. It was a learning experience for me. So I got to learn like what exactly I did and experience, you know, experience with whatever else. And it was the dessert that disappeared. So I pulled it off. So you did a good job. I pulled it job. off, but I still think if I would have made something. That, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and we all need that flexibility because there's probably been years where I've been told to make a dessert. And I was like, I'm going to make my like, five layer lemon dessert. That's just amazing. And I'm like, okay, box brownies. Yes. I've had a day. <laughs> so, so sometimes it's nice to have the flexibility to work with when you need to be able to have that flexibility. So it's kind of nice to be able to work with the circumstances as they may be. So having that little bit. Agreed. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So what are some of the strategies for managing the mental load of holiday hosting without becoming overwhelmed? Oh, geez. This is a really good question. I think as boring as it's going to sound, guys, I know this is going to be boring, but it's what I'm going to say next. Planning. Mm. Honestly, planning makes such a huge difference, especially during the holidays when you have a thousand things probably on the go. Yeah. So when I think about planning, I don't just think about each day, what you have to do or the list that you have to make, but also plan what's really important for you about this celebration. And then I think you mentioned it before too, focus your energy on what's really important. So for me, when I think about the holidays, I mean, growing up in the family that we did, like the food, we have to, like the food is important. So I'm going to focus my time and energy and my kind of mental faculties thinking about the menu. And the other things I may not give as much time to. Some people may be more about tradition or some people may be more about like the decorations or the kids like activities or whatever it is. I just think spend some time planning and thinking about what's really important and then give yourself permission to let everything else go. Yeah. You don't have to do everything. You really don't. And I'll give you an example of this, like in our own life, we used to host a really big fish fry and it was huge. It was like cousins and, you know, it was a lot of people coming over and it was a lot of work. There was a lot of time. It was a lot of money. <laughs> and then COVID happened and we couldn't host it. And that gave us a chance to step back and go, do we really like hosting this? Like, is this something that we have to keep hosting only because we've always hosted it? And we don't host it anymore. Like we let that go. And I'm like, I'm actually okay with that. I mean, I miss seeing everybody, but everybody who was there, like they could host it too. It doesn't always have to be you. So I think taking a step back and thinking about like, what do I really enjoy? What's really important? And if it's not, is there another way that maybe somebody else could take it on? Or maybe you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Does that make sense? No, I love that. And I think that it was actually a gift that I met you when you and I had our conversation 
way before I had my wedding, because I feel like with my wedding, like our conversation and that gist of like what's important and connection is hugely important for me. And savor is, was my word of the year when it was coming up. I want to savor. (laughs) Yes. And so for my wedding, like being able to savor and like the connections and that time being important to me, because I think my little girl imaginations of my wedding was like this big wedding with all these people. And I've been to a ton of weddings. I've been in a ton of weddings and being to a ton of weddings and being in a ton of weddings. I know that like you don't actually get to see and talk to and spend time with the people that are getting that you're there for to support and be there for. And yes, you're witnessing and there for that day. But I traveled long distances for a number of weddings and barely got to say five words to the person I was there to support that I traveled so far to be there to support them. And I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted to actually be able to savor my time with the people that I wanted connection. And I recognized that even though we pared down our invitation list and made it so small, that which was shocking that I did and was able to do, but that we did that, even though we'd done that, that they still needed to have like connection with other people there that they didn't know because I've lived so many places and done so many different things. And because even though my partner and I have been together for like four, almost five years or five years at that point in time, a lot of that was during COVID. And so a lot of people we knew hadn't met each other. There hadn't been like opportunities for everyone to get together. So there was going to be a lot of nobody knew each other. So we actually focused on, we had activities. We had games at our wedding. And my joke is that people are going to be, especially the boys that were boys, young men between the ages of like 12 and like 20, that were at their wedding, like their poor brides one day. Cause they're going to be like, this is like and the brides are like, no, you don't play games at weddings. You have a DJ and a dinner, like cause food and dancing are what matters at wedding. And they're like, no, like there was like, they played this game and they played this game and there was prizes and there was a will you spun instead of having favors and like, there's, like all the other stuff. Yeah. Cause we did total unconventional stuff because, and there was like, I, I still remember like this, I think he was probably 12 year old boy that like came up to me. He's like, this is the best ever. I've had so much fun. Look at the two prizes I got. And like all the same stuff. He's like, I love weddings. And I'm like, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. But Because like the connection and the savoring was what was important to me. And like, and the food, like in the end I did, we like with a caterer, there was way more money that I planned on spending. And we literally changed our honeymoon hotel from an all-inclusive to like something else. Cause like we took that money and put it towards the caterer. Cause I was trusting too much over the food and I'm like, nope, this caterer will just take care of it. And my stress level is going down. It's worth paying for somebody that I know is just going to take care of it. And it's going to be good. And there was no complaints and only positive things about the food, which was all I cared about. Amazing. Just no complaints. And (laughs) that was good enough. And I didn't have to worry about it. So like, that's what I needed. But it was very much me deciding what was most important and like people connecting and having fun and me not having to stress about the food was what it came down to. And so like, so those are like what was most important. And that was what we prioritize because, and it meant like having a small, small guest list and not inviting who I would have thought I would have invited to my wedding. Cause there's people who were, I was in their weddings and they weren't invited to my wedding, which is just mind blowing that that would be the case. Right. But it was so important to me to hold to those things. So it's like, but I feel like our conversation two years ago set me up for that. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh my God. Look at that concept. I could do a happy dance here. Yeah. Yes, happy dance, happy dance. And well, I definitely was doing happy dancing at my wedding because of it. So thank you. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah. But that really is like, I think that that, like that mental load of you, like deciding what the priorities are and then just like being able to slide off the go. other pieces. That's right. Yes. Sometimes it's doing less. Because there Doing is less. so much. Yeah. Doing less. I love that. And I think that time of year, like we're talking about the holidays, even your wedding, yes. but we're talking yes. about the holidays. There's not enough people out there telling you that you don't need to do all these things. Yes. So if if anything, just remember, I want you to hear me and Shauna telling you, you yes. don't have to do all these things. You don't. Yes. And that's the thing with like the realistic expectations and boundaries. So do we have any more like, to say on that, I think we've given a kind of good guidance on that, but do you have more thoughts on how hosts can set those realistic expectations and boundaries when it comes to entertaining? Well, aside from, I mean, you have to communicate. 
Ooh. You know, sometimes people don't communicate because they expect people to know. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you should know that I'm busy. So me hosting Christmas and New Year's is going to be stressful for me. But if you haven't actually asked for help or you haven't vocalized that, it's kind of not fair. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes and I'm going to generalize like as women, sometimes we just really have a hard time asking for help or speaking what we actually need from people. And that includes people who are like close by and around us, you know? So my husband's pretty good. I mean, we've been married now almost 25 years, but I still have to say like, I can't do this. Like I need you to go do the shopping or I need you to go to the liquor store and get like the stuff. And he's like, okay, cool. But I can't just sit and stew that he's not offering to do these things if I'm not communicating that I need these things done. And I think the same goes for holiday hosting. So if you need something or if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you want that extra help, you have to actually take ownership of that and ask for it because it's not going to just magically happen. Yes, I love that. And that actually goes because we're doing the podcast episodes on the four tendencies, which was the last one and the next one are... We're bookending this with that. And I think that one thing I've realized with my husband is that he is an upholder. At least I'm pretty sure he is an upholder. And with him being upholder, like he needs really clear, clear what the expectations are. And with that, if I'm ever feeling guilty or not wanting to ask for help and earlier in my life, this is like a skill I've only learned in the last five, <laughs> 10 years. I'm not good at asking for help. And when you're not good at asking for help, you're not clear when you're asking for help. And so, and I'm also a questioner. And so then I also have like, well, like we could do this for dinner or we could do that. Or if you could maybe pick this up or maybe this would work or that would, no, he needs a picture of, I need this kind of butter. <laughs> yes. I need this kind of milk. I need this exact thing. Pick up this. And if I tell him I need this, pick up this, he will pick up this. It also means, it also means, this has been a funny thing in our relationship. So I'll give an example from years ago. So my uncle was coming to visit and he loves Alaskan Amber. And uh, so I specific, can you pick up Alaskan Amber? Cause my uncle's going to be in town for him. He went to six different stores looking for Alaskan Amber and was gone for an hour and a half. And I needed him home. To, I mean, <laughs> there also needs to be, I would like Alaskan Amber. If you could look at two stores for that, if you don't find it, don't worry about it or get this instead. Yeah. Or if you don't find it after two stores, call me. Like, or something like, you know what I mean? So there's, so it's a funny, like, because he is like, he will do what he is told and he will do that for five hours at that, <laughs> like to, to look for that. He will drive to a town five over, no, not really, but he will like, he will hunt down and make it happen. And so it's so funny because me knowing that, oh, cause I'm like, what? Like, no, I would look at one and if it's not there, I'd just be like, oh, I didn't find oh, it. Well, yeah. And so other people, because like, you know, knowing who you're, audience is somebody else will like be oh yeah it wasn't there like you know and I'm like no but I but I can't finish this dish if I don't have whipped cream why don't you just go to a different store and get whipped cream right yeah so being like there might be more than one step to being clear sometimes sure <laughs> agreed yeah yes but no that's very helpful but bit asking for help and being very clear about how important sometimes something it is say like hey love on your way home like I'm making this pie I need whipped cream make sure you get whipped cream in the carton <laughs> in, this, <laughs> in the refrigerated section, <laughs> like not frozen, not, not cool. Whip. Not the thing. Yeah. <laughs> not the spray can, but the cart in there. Like, yeah. So those pieces is, yeah, it's important to be able to ask for that and to get that. How important, know how important it is for you too, for you to be like, oh, well actually like, if you don't find it, I'll just, I'll make I'll the box brown. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Like exactly. Exactly. We'll figure something else out. Yes, exactly. But having those pieces that, you know, and being able to accept help is a big piece of it. And I know that we talked about this the last time we talked about too, but we talked about assignments for kids. And I yeah. think that that's like a valuable, like know your resources and be able to use them. So we talked about like relatives bringing dishes and this works too when you're having parties with friends, like knowing what other people can bring and thinking through that. I think that's part of the mental load too, is as you're driving and thinking through the event to be like, who are my resources? What else can they do when they bring? And remembering that your kids are resources too. I just saw like a really great article about kids who do chores and like how much more successful they are in life because they do that. And I saw another article that was talking about 
teaching kids the mental load of chores and that the first step is noticing something needs to get done. Because even with chore charts, like mom's the one that's noticing that the counter needs to get cleaned off. And so starting to like even teach kids about, so what does it look like when things are to get, what do you think that it needs to be cleaned? Like, what's the point that doing that? Because we don't, we're so automatic with these things that we don't recognize that we've learned these things and we have to teach these to our children, regardless of gender of like when they need to start recognizing this piece. So for party planning, like with kids and entertaining, like what are some ideas about ways that kids can chip in? When my kids were younger, they really loved setting the table and which was great. I mean, that was a great help because they would set the table. Not only did they learn a skill, right? How to set a table, but then they had this sense of pride when people came, they were like, we set the table. I think you can get your kids involved in, I mean, it's the holidays, right? Have them help you like wrap gifts or write cards or decorate. I think there's lots of ways you can get them involved without it having to be you specifically. But that also means having to let go of your expectation or your perfectionism around something. Mm -hmm. So you have to be prepared to do that too. So if you're going to let them for instance, set the table, because I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist, which I'm recovering from, but it took a lot in me not to want to go in there and like rearrange things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? What? Rearrange? I was like, oh, you put the napkin on top of the plate. Okay. All right. Or these don't match. Or yes. why didn't you space out like these? You put all the matching plates on one side and the other ones on the other instead of mixing them up. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like those little things where I'm like, okay, we got to let that go because that's actually not important. What was more important is that they participated and were part of this. So. The connection, but yeah, I want to know like what is most important for you, right? If your thing is that you want this like picture from how the table was set before everyone did, and that is for you that in your mind that you're gonna put that on Instagram, then don't have your kids help set the table in the dining room. Like have them set up the beverage table, right? Like, you know, organize that or have them decorate like some little piece and people first walk in. Make a sign for the door to welcome the guests or have yes. them do something like that. That's super yes. cute. Like, yeah, decide what's important to you and then know what's, and that helps you recognize that you can't have everything be important to you. You need to decide what's important to you and do that. And that's just good and healthy for us overall to know what we can let go of. I think that the toilet paper track is something I could assign to kids <laughs> right before. You're right. You definitely could. Definitely. You guys can take care of the toilet paper track. That's a great <laughs> thing for you to do. It's a great thing for you to do. We had a tradition for, and I probably mentioned this when we talked to you for a holiday dinners specifically, that we would have the kids go and get the drink orders. So that, that depended on ages, they wouldn't always do that. But we literally have them like get like little because we have little aprons for them to put yeah, on so yeah. the little aprons and they get like a little notepad and a pen. It would go around and like write down root beer or they would write down like if somebody wanted the eggnog or if they wanted a drink, what the drink was. And then they would have an adult and then we'd assign an adult who walked in the door that they would be fixing the drinks. But like, you know, you walk in the door, you get an assignment. <laughs> so, so they would they would go get those assignments and do that piece. And it was this great little way for the kids to be involved that they're old enough to write, but not necessarily pour the drinks and, and fix the drinks. And then we'd have them bring the drinks to the people to do That's that. That's adorable. So, I love that. That was their little piece that they were involved in. So it's kind of fun to find like something that they can be in charge of or involved in, or maybe like if you don't care about, if you do have like if you have a charcuterie board that you've prepared, <laughs> that probably should be what you prepared. But if you were actually doing like hot appetizers that you're doing or whatever else, then that's your thing. But if you're doing something that's like, we're just gonna have a cheese and cracker board and they can put that together however they want to. <laughs> like yeah. to have like something that they can do that it's, you don't mind how that works. Or maybe they do like the kids table of snacks that they put together. And so that table can look a little different if there's going to be a kids table of snacks. Yeah, I like that idea too. Yes. We can get them involved in a way that like a little bit more whatever else. Yes. So for people that are like, I love these ideas of taking off the mental load a little bit and spreading things out a little bit, get more people involved. But what are the tips for like bringing the joy back into the hosting so that for people who've lost their enthusiasm, I know that when we talked before, it was like after COVID kind of getting back into the groove with it, but like how can people bring back the joy. Like, I still remember that when the Where Are You Christmas song that came back, that like <laughs> yes. when it came out with the, the, the Grinch movie, that I was like, Oh, I feel that. Like, where are you, Christmas? Where's the joy that I used to have when I was a kid? Like, so, no, so bring back the joy and the enthusiasm with this. Like, what are your thoughts around that? Okay, this is kind of a tough one because at the same time, recognizing that maybe you just need a break, you know, maybe you're just a little bit burnt out and you need a break, and that's okay. 
So I don't want to say like, you just have to muscle through and find a way like that's maybe you just need a break. So maybe this year is not your year like to do it. That's completely fine. But if it's something that you want to tiptoe back into, then maybe you start with something small and maybe you start with people who are closest to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like maybe have your best girlfriends over and you're going to like, I don't know, do some like Christmas craft and have hot chocolate or wine or whatever night. Like start with something like that. Or maybe instead of hosting at your, maybe you go somewhere else. So maybe you think of an idea and be like, hey, let's go see a play. And before that, we'll go do this and you're going to organize it. You're going to do a wine tasting tour. So it's not something that you have to like, do at your house, but you are facilitating that. Yes. I love it. You know what I mean? So it just kind of gets you back in the groove of connecting without all those moving parts that come with hosting at your home. Yes. Does that make sense? Don't have to clean. Don't have to clean. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. Yes. I love that. And I think that it is like going back to what brings you the most joy. Like if so, if Thanksgiving is your holiday, if Christmas is your holiday, if Hanukkah is your holiday, if New Year's is your holiday, like whatever was, is your favorite holiday. Cause they're all coming up, right. To, to like, which one is your favorite, pick your favorite and then go back to like, what brought you the most joy around it? Was it that you went and saw the nutcracker at one point in time? And it was so much fun for you. Was it that you know, you have this one memory of wrapping gifts, like with people watching Christmas movies and you really enjoy the Christmas movies. Is it that there's this one Thanksgiving and really was just the pie. And so maybe you just want to have your friends over for pie the Sunday after Thanksgiving and just your friends, (laughs) you know? So like, so what is the one thing that you enjoy? And maybe you'd rather just go have a high tea somewhere where you live with just your three closest girlfriends and go, holiday shopping together and have high tea and just do that. Or just you and your girlfriends buy yourselves a gift yourself, you a gift, nobody, you buy yourself a gift. You all wrap your own gift and you all go have happy hour and you open your gifts together. And that is your holiday celebration this year. Mm-hmm. I had, um, I had a girlfriend do, it was, remember like Oprah's favorite things. Do you remember that? Okay. At Christmas time. So she did a favorite things party at her house but the deal was everything had to be less than $10 Ooh. and you had to buy that favorite thing for everybody there. Ooh. So like some people, like one of my girlfriends was like, this is my favorite tea ever. And everybody got like her favorite tea. And another friend was like, I love this chapstick so much. I have it in my purse. I have it in my car. And everybody got one of her favorite chapsticks. So it was like these little things that were your favorite thing. And I thought that was just like, that was such a great way to get together. And you're also exposing your friends to things that you love that maybe they wouldn't have tried otherwise. I don't know. It was just a really great, inexpensive party for us to all get together and try something new. I love- Isn't that great? I so want to do that. Yes. If I did, so I moved, I moved to a new place like a year ago and I was like, oh my gosh, if I live something and had like a close group of girlfriends, I'd totally be doing that this yeah. year. And I'd want to get like stockings or a cool yeah. mug or a cool thing to put them all in. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. that'd be so much fun. I love that idea. Yeah. Yes. It didn't have to be expensive. Like, yes, it's just cute stuff. Yes. I have this mascara that I love. I'd buy everybody the mascara that I love. Yeah, so, my, yes. my one friend bought us a primer, like oh. eyeshadow primer, which I never thought about in my life to use eyeshadow primer. But now that I have it, I'm like, how did I not know about this product? Yeah. I love it. I love like, yes, I love the favorite things and just doing, because that's such a fun way to introduce everybody to something like that and, yeah. and spread that joy. See, that's definitely a joy. That's definitely a joy thing. I it love is. that as a joy thing, Yeah, but find just like what you actually love. And is that little piece of joy that like, yeah, focusing on stockings is what I've done before when I want to get back to that. And then it got overwhelming. So I'm like, oh, this year we're not doing stockings. So <laughs> like, you know, figuring out like, and giving yourself permission to like go in waves. And when you feel like that and not to bring it back to my wedding, but we're going to bring it back to my wedding. And like people that listen to this probably know that I post, like I postpone my wedding an entire year. And a lot of people acted like I was calling off my wedding. And it's like, no, I'm just 
I want to savor and I can't savor this year. Like I'm not in a place to savor it. So I need to put it off until it can be what I want it to be. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to say like, now this year, I'm not hosting Christmas, y'all. Like I'm not doing Thanksgiving. I'm not doing a New Year's party. Like whatever I'm not doing. I'm not even doing New Year's this year. I'm going to bed early and that's okay. Like That's okay. Yes. We'll give you permission. You yeah. have Mara and Shauna's permission <laughs> to say, uh-uh. Not doing it. <laughs> not doing it. Or I'm doing no. less. Yeah. Yes. yes. This year is my year off so that next year I can actually savor and enjoy and really like give my all into this. So yes, absolutely. Like I told my siblings, because I don't know if it's like a being the oldest thing. Every time it's my parents, like Christmas gifts, it falls on me. Everyone's texting me. What are we <laughs> getting mom and dad? I'm like, guys, we are like full blown adults. Why is it always up to me? <laughs> so after last year, I was like, next year, I'm not involved. You guys figure it out and then just tell me what I owe and I can e-transfer. And then that way I, it's one less, two less things I have to think about. Like seriously. I like it. Nice job. Good boundary. Good job. Was that last year you said that or is that? No, I did it last year. And then after that, I was like, Oh, so we had jerks are on your the outcome. Okay. I want to hear the outcome. I'm like, is it too early for the outcome? Okay. It's too early for the outcome. I'll let you know. Okay. You'll let us know. You have to come back next year so we can find out how that turns out. I want to hear how that turns out. I like it. I like it. Awesome. This has been so valuable. Do you have anything that we haven't covered that you feel like would be useful information or tips for everyone they need to hear? Okay. Let's see. Okay. So here's a really simple cocktail that I love making at Christmas time, like these holiday times, because it looks super festive. It's like red and bubbly. Ooh. It's delicious and it's super easy. And that is Cure Royale. Ooh. So Cure Royale is made with creme de cassis. So it's a liqueur that's like made with black currant. Yes. And you pour it in a champagne glass. So the bottom is like half an ounce of creme de cassis. And then you top it with champagne. And then you throw a blackberry in there. And it looks like super duper festive. And why I like it when I'm hosting is that I can prep like the flute glasses with the creme de cassis like on a tray before everybody gets there. And then when guests arrive, I can take the champagne that's cold, pour it on top and serve it. And boom, guests have like a really nice holiday cocktail. That was easy. I love it. And the funniest thing is that we actually bought creme de cassis at a store because our wedding was like planned for like three, like so long. Like our our wedding was, we bought some of that and you're making me remember because we've moved. So now I got to figure out where it is. We (laughs) bought some of that for the wedding and then never used it because I just don't remember we bought it. Now I had to have a holiday party and get it out. There you go. I remember we did buy that. That is brilliant. Yeah. You can buy those pretty little like skewers, you know, like holiday skewers and you can skewer some fruit on that. So then, and that's like all ready to go. And then you just top it with your champagne and you have a nice bubbly drink. Beautiful. Yeah. Cause we tried it and we loved it. And I have like, I actually love, I'm not going to remember the name of it, but I like a sparkling wine, a certain sparkling wine that I love. And we serve that at our wedding, but I think we're all out of it. I actually gave, cause somebody else was just like going, now what's the best? And we got gold <laughs> bottles oh, of the kind yes. that I like. So we had gold bottles at our wedding. I gave the last, cause somebody was like all excited about it. I gave them the last bottle of the gold bottles. So we need to get some more of it, but that sparkling wine, I love that. So that we should nice. use that and do that. But I'd forgotten we didn't serve yeah, that at our wedding. And you just reminded me that we bought that. I'm like, where is that <laughs> bottle of the creme? Because we got like two bottles of the creme de cassis because of that. Yep. A good reminder. There you go. Sure. There you go. Kismet. And then the other thing, if you need a little bit of a boost, you need a little bit of help during the holidays. I am going to be doing like a holiday prep challenge in Ooh. November. So it's going to be like over 10 days and I'm going to send like little challenges to get done. So as you do them each day, it will get you one step closer to being ready to host. That way we're not in that frantic panic at the end, like the last two days before people come, you've actually been doing things all along so that when they come, you can answer the door, relax and really enjoy yourself. And that's so beautiful because I feel like that's bringing the joy back, like spreading it out so that you can enjoy the tasks. Because I think most of the people I know, most of the women I know love this stuff, but it's when you have to cram it in and get it done because people are showing up and it's an expectation and it's a stressor that it's not fun. And it's when you can like spread it out and actually like do this fun thing that you're doing because you love creative and you love these beautiful things and getting the spirit and then it's joyful and fun. So I think that that's an actual answer to that question too, is being part of your challenge. I love this. Thank you. We'll definitely make sure that when we get more info to how to get involved, we'll put that in the show notes. That's beautiful. Okay. Great. 
I love that. Perfect. You are such a gift. And unfortunately, you don't live everywhere, but you do do local things where you live on occasion too. I do. Yeah, I do workshops because I used to have a cake decorating business as well. So it seems like these cupcakes and cookie decorating workshops are like a thing now. So, and I love doing them It's because I'm teaching you like little tips and tricks to just kind of level up your cupcakes or your cookies. So that's something that I do, but it's mostly local. I'm sorry. No, Sean. that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but like, if you're local, tell me again where you're in Canada. Cause I know you're in Canada, but where is local to you? I'm like Windsor, Essex County. So like Southern Ontario. Yeah. Southern Ontario. Okay. So if you're in Southern Ontario, then you get the that's advantage <laughs> of getting this in person. And one day, but your YouTube channel has a ton of tips and tricks. And you just need to do more stuff online. You just need to teach these online first things. I know. I have so many ideas for the YouTube channel. I have so many ideas. So it's coming. So many ideas? No, no. Yeah. You have so much to offer. You are such a joy. Like joyful. And I love it that you're the joyful hostess because again, every time I get to joy, I think Mara, I think joy. I love it. I love it. And so follow along and do that is wonderful. And we do always have our thing that we do on the Chris shows, you know, is we talk about like, what do you do for self-maintenance? Because you do balance a lot. Like our listeners, we think of you and think of you as just being this wonderful gift to hostessing and entertaining and helping us put the connection and joy back into entertaining. But you also work full time and do this as well. So you are just amazing that you balance all this. So what do you do to take care of you while doing all these wonderful things? Mm, Okay. So a couple things. I think I said this the last time, but it still applies. This time is journaling helps me tremendously. I feel like that's a great place to kind of like turn inward and check in with myself. So journaling daily. And then also what I've been doing is getting outside, just getting outside in nature and actually making time to get outside. Cause I've spent so much of my life in tech, like screen inside world that getting outside sometimes is exactly the refresh that I need and getting outside alone. So you can just, I'm not listening to a podcast, not listening to the grit show. The grit show is perfect when I'm getting ready in the morning. When I go for my walks, it's like nothing. I'm just like listening to outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say nature and journaling. That's fabulous. I love it. And so tell us the name of the YouTube channel. Joyful Hostess. Perfect. On YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube. And your website? Joyfulhostess.com. And you on Instagram. Guess what I'm going to say. Joyful I'm Hostess. Gonna, I'm going to guess Joyful Hostess. <laughs> joyful Hostess. Joyful Hostess. We'll have all that stuff in the show notes so you guys can click on the link as well. But thank you so much, Mara. You are such a gift. And I think you're going to like add so much to the holidays and just to the framework of thinking. Like I said, my wedding, I feel like was better because you and I have connected and I am so grateful for you. So thank you for all you do. Well, I'm grateful for you too, Shauna. Thank you so much. I always have a good time here. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. I value the time we shared together today. Thank you for making time to be here and to continue taking steps towards growth and bringing more ease into your life. I'd love for us to stay connected on Instagram at Shauna Podcasts or at the.grit.show. There's even a link in bio at the show where you can send me an email to let me know what you thought today's episode. Hearing from you helps to make the effort that goes into producing these episodes worthwhile. After all, you're why I'm here. And since it's been a while since you've heard this, you are the only one of you that this world has got. And that really does mean something. I hope you realize that. I'll be back again soon, and I hope you're following along or subscribed so that you'll know and be here too.